Okay, so we're working with some fractions and mixed numbers here that are both positive and negative. So in 37 and 38, we're multiplying these fractions. And a, a pretty straightforward strategy that we can use to multiply these fractions is to multiply across. You might have heard this before, to multiply across. And if that helps you, if this, phrasing, if this phrasing helps you, uh, then use it. What it's saying is that, let's say you have, like we do in 37, negative 5 over 4 times 1 third. What you do is literally multiply across. So you take one numerator and multiply it across by the other, which is negative 5 times 1. And this is going to be over 4 times 3, and that's it, right? Now you can evaluate this. Negative 5 times 1, that's one group of negative 5, which is just negative 5, over 4 times 3, which is 12. Usually I think what might throw us off here is um, where do we, I guess, put the negative sign? Does it go with the numerator or denominator or somewhere in the middle? The point is that it doesn't matter. Think about it. If you put it in the numerator, that would be negative 5 divided by 12. If you put it in the denominator, you would get 5 divided by negative 12. Either way, those two answers are equivalent. So don't worry about where the negative sign is going to be, but once you choose to assign it to the numerator, keep it there. If you're going to choose to assign it to the denominator, keep it there. Uh, but you will get the same answer. We can just look at a quick example. Negative 2 over 1 is equal to what? Well, it's equal to negative 2. So in this case, I put the negative number in the numerator, and I evaluated it and got negative 2. But if I reverse this, let's say I do 2 divided by negative 1. Well, what's that equal to? Well, it's still equal to negative 2, right? And notice here that these two are equivalent. In one, we put our numerator in the denominator, and the other in the numerator, and, but we still got the same result, so that tells us it doesn't really matter. Now in 38, we're also multiplying, but instead of just rushing and multiplying across, let's think a little bit about the commutative property here. It's true that we're gonna, we could multiply 4 by 7 to get 28, but I'm just going to write 4 times 7. And then we could just multiply 9 times 4 and get 36, but there's something to see here. Once we write out that we are multiplying, we can switch the order. The commutative property tells us we can switch this order and won't change your value. So I can have 4 times 7, and I can have that over what? Well, instead of 9 times 4, I can have 4 times 9. I just change the order there. And what we can see here, if we kind of separate this fraction, almost the reverse of our first step here, where we combine fractions by multiplying to get this total fraction. Well, now we're going backwards, but we have a different order. What do you notice? What I see is that we have 4 over 4 times 7 over 9. And what's 4 over 4? Well, that's just 1. And then the answer is right there, 7 ninths. So what you can realize is that you have a numerator and denominator that are equal. Anywhere in the fractions when you're multiplying, those cancel out. They'll divide out to 1. And then you can have, well, whatever's left over then will be your answer. So here, 7 and 9 are left over, so our answer is 7 ninths. Now, 39 and 40 uh, deal with multiplication, division, and mixed numbers. Not that big of a deal. We can handle this. So let me just clear this off. Okay, so for 39, what are we doing? Well, we have negative 1 and 5 sevenths times negative 2 and 1 half. How do we deal with this? Well, with a mixed number, what we should realize is that this is negative 1 and 5 sevenths which can really be thought of as negative 1 plus negative 5 sevenths, right? Both parts of this mixed number are negative. And it, I think it makes sense if we think about a number line, right? If I just draw a rough number line here. So here's our number line. Here's 0. If I said where's negative 1 and 5 sevenths, you might draw negative 1 here and negative 2 there. Well, negative 1 here is right here. Negative 1 and 5 sevenths is past negative 1. It's adding more negative, right? A little bit past the halfway point. Maybe about here. So you can see on a number line that negative 1 and 5 sevenths brings you past negative 1. 
towards negative 2, makes it more negative. This kind of implies, I think, that that 5 sevenths is also a negative piece. So this mixed number is altogether negative, and so is the other one. Negative 2 and 1 half, you can think of that as negative 2 plus negative 1 half. So we rewrite this, and now this ends up looking more complicated, but we can deal with this relatively quickly. Because all we're doing right now is getting ourselves set up to rewrite these as improper fractions, right? So this first one, what do I do? Well, negative 1, I'm going to rewrite that as negative 7 over 7. Our other fractions out of 7, so this helps us. Because now we have like denominators and we can add. Same thing over here, except I'm using 2 as my common denominator. Negative 2 is the same thing as negative 4 over 2, right? That's still equal to negative 2, but our denominator is 2, so we can add. So now we have this all set up. We are multiplying them. So what I'm going to do is add these two fractions right here. Negative 7 plus negative 5. We can just add those numerators since our denominators are equal. So that gives us what? Well, negative 12 over 7. And then we're multiplying that by what? Well, here we're going to get negative 5 over 2. So now we have this set up and we can multiply. And going back to the idea before, there is an opportunity here to cancel out because 2 is a factor of 12. So we could multiply negative 12 by negative 5 and get positive 60, and that would be over 14. And then we could reduce that. Or we could say, well, when we multiply, we end up switching the order anyway. Or we could switch the order, and we would get negative 12 over 2 times negative 5 over 7. Notice I just changed the order around. And negative 12 divided by 2 is just negative 6. So cross that out. And now this is a little bit easier to work with because negative 6 times negative 5 is 30, right? It's over 7. And that's our answer right there. So backtracking, um, we, we rewrote our mixed numbers as improper fractions. I split them apart and then added them back together. But there is a shortcut. What we could do is multiply our 7, right? By the negative 1, that's going to give us, in a sense, our common denominator and then add not 5 but negative 5 because this is negative 5 sevenths so that would mean 7 times negative 1 that's negative 7 plus negative 5 is negative 12 and you keep your denominator and that is what we got over here and then for this one over here we can do 2 times negative 2 plus negative 1 right and that's negative 5 over 2 and that, that does get us to the same point we would just then have to multiply so only one more to go, we're almost there. Hang in there. So I'll clear this off. Sorry. Let me just fix this. Okay. All right, so now our last one um, is 1 ninth divided by negative 1 and 1 third. So let's write that out. 1 ninth divided by negative 1 and 1 third. So we have that mixed number in there again. Let's rewrite that. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus negative 1 is negative 4, so we get negative 4 thirds. And we have 1 ninth divided by negative 4 thirds. I, th I think a bigger discussion is that here we're going to divide by a fraction, so we multiply by the reciprocal, which means we keep the first number, 1 ninth, and multiply by the reciprocal. Essentially, we flip the fraction to get 3 over negative 4. And now we just multiply across as we did in our very first problem. 1 times 3 is 3, and 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. We should try and reduce this though. We divide numerator and denominator by the same number, which is 3. It's a common factor, and we get 1 over negative 12. And there's our answer for 40. All right, hope this helped.